Welcome to this video in Blazor about creating a carousel component. I'm going to add a new item, call it carousel. Now this component has one property marked with the parameter attribute. The property will be of type type array and I call it components. It will display the type of the components that we want to render in the carousel. Then I'm going to override the initialized async method. Now in here, we are going to actually call the mechanism that is stepping over the components. And this method we have to define. It is asynchronous, therefore I mark, in it, mark it with the async keyword. I call the method walk through. Can very well be that I'm misspelling the word. Now in here, we are stepping through the components as long as this condition here is met. Now, if you are familiar with .NET, you know that in most cases in an asynchronous or generally when using the task parallel library in combination with a while loop, we are using cancellation token. But first to do this, I have to import the namespace system dot threading. Here define the cancellation token source field and define the cancellation token field. Here I'm going to initialize them and ct equals cts.token. Now, as long as the cancellation is not requested, we are going to execute this code in here. First, we are going to await two and a half seconds. Here I pass the cancellation token too. So if its cancellation is triggered, if the cancellation token source is canceled by calling cancel on the cancellation token source, then it will be displayed in the cancellation token and this method will be finished. Then I also define a field of type integer current position, which is going to give us the current position in this type array here. I'm going to increment this by one. And then because I'm in here on another thread, I have to call invoke async in order to Call state has changed so that the component is getting re-rendered because in an asynchronous method we have to call it manually. So I also have to define a method which is actually rendering the desired component. I call it render. Now in here we are taking an integer. I call it uh, position. Here I have to return a render fragment which is a delegate type that is returning void and expecting a render tree builder as its input parameter. Now here this, I'm defining a statement lambda. First, I'm I'm calling open component here on the render tree builder. And here I have to pass in the type. And the type, I'm going to retrieve it by using our components array. And then in here, calling math dot absolute so that in all cases we have a positive number and in here I'm just going to uh, use the modulo operator components dot length. Now you may ask like what is the modulo operator doing? The modulo operator is giving us the number that is if we divide one number with another number then it is going to give us the number that is being left over. And because of how the modulo operator works, if you divide a number, if you modulo a number, it's not, if you modulo a number with an, another number here, you are getting constant values ranging from zero to this number here. So position can be 1 million and you are still going to have a number that is between zero and components length. But yeah, I'm not a native speaker, so I hope you 
you know what the model operator is doing regardless. So here we have the method that is going to render our component. Then we pass the position, um, the current position. Now, here in the markup, I have actually to call it. But first, so that I just don't forget, here I'm going to call the walkthrough method. Now we will see greens quickly it's because you're not awaiting the method. But this behavior is, of course, wanted. So now in here, I am going to build the markup. Define a div. Now display will be flex. Uh, we will, so yeah, we are going to use bootstrap. Now the flex direction will be column. Then I'm going to define a border, let's just say primary with the color and then alert info and the column width will be five so that won't take the whole page. Now here again, display flex, justify content between so that horizontally the, co the space is like maximized between them and align items. Now this is the vertical that they are vertically centered in the middle. And then, yeah, I'm just setting the height to 400, 400 pixel. Now, so in here, I'm going to insert three things. Here, I have linked it in the description. Two times, I'm going to insert an image, which is called next. Now, this image is a narrow so that, they, that the user can step through the component in the carousel. And then here in the middle, actually the the component, oh, so calling our method render and pausing it the current position. Now, this second one here, I have to style a bit or uh, let's just let's just have a look i'm not sure which arrow is in the real or is in the matching position one arrow i have to rotate with 180 degrees oh you're not yeah i'm not even so let's just say carousel now before we can render it i also have to define the type array type of counter, type of survey prompt, and then type of fetch data. And then I'm passing it here. So components, type, types. Oh, here the semicolon, because it's an assignment. Okay, so the first arrow I have to rotate. Transform, rotate 180 degrees. So, and then here I'm going to Build another div, also display flex. Now also justify content center so that the items are horizontally in the middle. Here I'm just going to for each over components. Now here I'm building a little section so that the user know which component is displayed currently. Here again, the exact same mechanism, current position, modulo, components length. If this is equals to the index of the current item in the components array, then we are going to 
display it alert alert let's just say danger and border will be dark and if not if condition is not met then we're just going to style it with alert alert info border dark ah dark so now we have here the two arrows and of course we want to have some mechanism when we click the arrow we are actually doing something so i'm going to define a method here now you may ask yourself like what how how do all the, these parts actually match together because we have defined this asynchronous method the the goal is that when, as long as the user doesn't click anything then we are just going to let our method do its job when the user clicks an arrow then you are going to determine we are going to trigger the cancel uh, the so we are going to call the cancel method or invoke the method so that from now on the user can step through the application manually. And with backwards, it's just a parameter. So in here, I call on click with backwards true. auto and the name auto because like from now on they are doing it uh, yeah no auto is not it's not a very good name let, uh, let's just rename it manually so that we know that from now on the user is stepping manually through the application and then the backwards here is true because that's like the left arrow so we want to step backwards and then the second arrow, the exact same, but backwards will be false this time. So we are loading the application and then the walkthrough method here is doing its job. It's doing its job as long as the user is not clicking an arrow. When the user has clicked an arrow, then this method here is determinated and the user can step through the carousel on his or, or her own. So let's have a look. So here, that's the, the three diffs. Now you see you are in the last one, first one. Here, the walkthrough method is asynchronous, asynchronously doing its job. Two and a half seconds. After two and a half seconds, we are going to the next component. Now I have enough from the automatically thing, and I want to do it myself. Now we see, now from now on, everything is manually. So the user can manually step through the carousel and again when we refresh it of course everything starts from the beginning we are stepping automatically through we click here we are stepping manually through the carousel thank you very much for your attention